Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 7, Classification of Solutions. Okay, hmm. So we're going to find solutions, or we have been finding solutions, but now we are going to classify them. So we're just going to do some review here real quick, and then we'll move on to that classification explanation. Solve each of the following equations for x. So I have a 5x on the right, a 7x on the left. I want all of my x's on one side, so I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. 7x minus 5x is 2x. Bring down the minus 3 equals 5x minus 5x is 0, plus 5 is 5. I need to isolate this x, so I'm going to add 3 to both sides. And 2x is on the left, because negative 3 plus 3 is 0, and 5 plus 3 is 8. And then I need to divide both sides by 2. The 2's cancel, and I'm left with x equals 4. Okay, so if I check this, 7 times 4 is 28, minus 3 is 25. 5 times 4 is 20, plus 5 is 25. 25 equals 25. Okay, number 2. I have a 7x on this side, I have a 7x on this side. Uh-oh, I know what's happening here. If I subtract 7x from both sides, I get 0 minus 3, which is negative 3. And I get 7x minus 7x, which is 0 plus 5, which is 5. Negative 3 obviously does not equal 5, so this does not have any solutions. Number 3. 7x on one side, 7x on the other. Okay, something's happening here as well. If I get a minus 7x here and a minus 7x here, and I draw this line, 7x minus 7x is 0. Negative 3 minus 0 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 0 is negative 3. So when these are equal, that is a true statement, and therefore we have infinite. That's not a very good infinite symbol infinite, still not very good, solutions. What do you mean, infinite solutions? Well, pick a number, any number, I don't care. 17, okay, 17. 7 times 17 minus 3 equals... Try that again. 7 times 17 minus 3 equals... Negative 3 plus 7 times 17. 7 times 7 is 49. 7 and 4 is 11. Minus 3 is 116. Negative 3 plus 119. Negative 3 plus 119 is 116. So no matter what I plug in for x, this will always be true infinite solutions. Number four, give a brief explanation as to what kind of solutions you expect the following linear equations to have. Transform the equations into a simpler form if necessary. So what we're looking for is if I have the same number of x's on both sides, then something's happening. Either if they cancel out and the, the constants are equal, the two numbers are equal, then there is infinite solutions. If the two constants are different, then there are no solutions. Okay, that was actually the same. So let me see, rather than writing all that, let's just explain it doing these problems. So like it said, simpler form if necessary. So, oh, let's change colors. I have an 11x minus 2x over here. So if I do that, I get 9x plus 15 equals. And I have an 8 plus 7 over here. And 8 plus 7 is 15 plus 9x. I've got a 9x. I've got a 9x. These two are equal. Therefore, infinite solution. I do not need to continue. The 9s will cancel. 15 equals 15. Okay, before we continue, I wanted to explain what is going on here, so I created this for you. Um, 
So we have four different scenarios when we're talking about coefficients and constants. First of all, you have to know those terms. So if we have a coefficient, that's the number in front of the variable. So if I have the different coefficients, so 7 is not the same as 5. And we have the constants that are different. Constants are, let, are numbers without the variable. So we have a negative 3 and we have a 5. So if the coefficients are different and the constants are different, if you work this out, you get x equals 4. There's only one solution. 28 minus 3 is 25, and 20 plus 5 is 25. No other number will work, just 4. Okay, so if the coefficients are different and the constants are different, one solution. Now, if we go on to the next scenario, coefficients are different. Okay, so I should be using color coding here because red is coefficients different and green is constants, so red-green. Okay, so coefficients are different, so look here. Didn't switch to red. Uh, 7 and 5, coefficients different. Negative 3, negative 3, constants are the same. If I subtract 5x over here, I get 2x. If I add 3 over here, I get 0. 2x equals 0, therefore x equals 0. There is only one solution. So when the coefficients are different and the constants are different or the same, we still only get one solution. But now when we come back to coefficients the same, here's a 7, here's a 7, where the constants are different, a negative 3 and a positive 5. Well, when I solve this, I subtract 7x over here, I get 0, no x's are left, and I get negative 3 equals positive 5. That does not make sense. It's not true. Therefore, there are no solutions that will make that true. And then finally, if the coefficients are the same, the 7s are the same, and the constants are the same, then when I solve this, I get 7x minus 7x is 0. I get negative 3 equals negative 3. And that's when we get infinite solutions, or what a lot of books will say is many solutions, or even infinitely many solutions. So, coefficients different, constants different, or the same, one solution. But when we have the coefficients are the same, then if the constant's different, there's no solution. And if the constant is the same, there's infinite solutions. And that is all of our possible outcomes. Okay, so keep that in mind when you're doing the rest of these. So here we go on number five. So the first thing I'm going to do is, now what we're doing is we're trying to determine if there's one solution, no solution, or many. And in order to do that, sometimes we have to simplify. So I'm going to distribute, and I get 3x minus 3 times 4 is 12. Carry the 1, 42, plus 1 equals negative 4x plus 5. Coefficients are different, so that's coefficients different. Doesn't matter if the constants are different or the same, we will only get one solution. So it says give a brief explanation as to what kind of solutions you expect. Transform the equations to simpler if necessary. It, I do, it does not say to solve this, but I could. But if I look right here and I have to stop right there, my coefficients are different. We're only going to get one solution. Okay, next one. This one needs to be simplified. I have a negative 3x here, and I have a negative 7x here, so I will combine like terms, and that is negative 10x plus 32 equals, and then I need to distribute here. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10x. Negative 2 times 10 is negative 20. So now when I look at this, I say, okay, I have a negative 10x on both sides, which means the coefficients are the same. So I'm either going to get no solution or infinite solutions. And knowing that the numbers are different means that it's not true, therefore no solution. And up here I should have said one solution. Okay. Okay, so here we go on to number eight. Actually, I didn't do seven yet, did I? Okay, here's seven, that's better. All right, so here we go. I need to distribute, and I'm going to get half of eight x, which is four x, and half of 26, which is 13, equals, why did I write four over x? So when I do that, that is four x, plus 13 
equals, I can't write today, forgetting things, 4x plus 13 equals 13 plus 4x. Now, I have a 4x. I have a 4x. So just looking at the coefficients, go back up here. They are the same. I will either get no solution or infinite solutions. Now I have to look at the constant. The constants are both 13 positive. So they're, therefore, they are also the same. So when I have same, same, I get many solutions. So number seven is infinite solutions. Okay, number eight, I've already carried this over so that we can look at the outcomes as we go. And number eight says write two equations that have no solutions. So I'm talking about same coefficients, constants are different. Okay, so 3x equals, so coefficients have to be the same. So I'm going to have 3x on both sides. And I'm going to make the constants different because I want no solutions. So plus 4 minus 3. There would be no solutions to that. If I did 7x plus 2, 7x plus 3. Same coefficients, different constants, no solution. Okay. Write two equations that have one unique solution each. So one solution could either be coefficients different with a constant different or a constant the same. But it says unique solutions each. Okay, so every time we have a coefficient that's different but the constants are the same, we're always going to get a solution of zero. So that is not unique. So what we want is co coefficient different constant different. So 7x plus 3 equals 6x plus 4. They're both different. That will give one unique solution. And then finally, I don't know, 8x minus 7 equals 5x plus 2. Constants, constants are different. Coefficients are different. Number 10, write two equations that have infinitely many solutions. I need the same coefficient with a constant that's the same. So I could be really basic with this and say 7x plus 4 equals 7x plus 4. Okay? Infinitely many solutions. Constant and coefficient the same. Um, but I could make this a little more interesting. And if I came up with something like 8x plus 4 equals 16x plus 12. Actually, let me do something different there. 8x plus 4 equals 8x plus 40. And then I factor out a 4 here, and I could say 4 times 2x plus 1 equals, factor out an 8 here, 8 times x plus 5. Okay, there we go. So this would be an equation with infinitely many solutions. Hmm, or would it? No, it would not. These are not equal, so I need to have 40 on both. So let me fix that. So this would have to be 40. Um, I can't factor out anything except that 8. Hmm, okay, bad example. Disregard that. Let's try another one. <laughs> All right. Let's pick something larger that has different factors. How about 16x plus 36 equals 16x plus 36. I'm just trying to manipulate this for practice. So I can factor out um, factors of 16 and 36. 16 is 1 times 16, 2 times 8. 4 times 4. Factors of 36 are 1 times 36, 2 times 18, 3 times 12, 4 times 9, 6 times 6. 
Okay, so we have all kinds of options here. So I could do, I could factor out an 8 and call this 2x plus 18. And over here, I could factor out a, I'm looking for common factors here. Okay, that's not right. 8 won't go into 36. I need common factors. So I have a 4 here. I have a 4 here. That would work. I have a 2 here. I have a 2 here. That would work. And that looks like it is it. So let's factor 1 out by 2 and factor the other out by 4. This would give me 8x plus 18. And this would give me 4x plus 9. There, that's better. So this would have infinitely many solutions. Okay, that is the end of Lesson 7. Review the summary and go do your problem set.